Here's a big freelancer marketing mistake I see that sabotages many freelancers' ability to get more clients. And it is not knowing your numbers. This video will talk about the mistake and how to fix it. So why it matters. If you don't know your numbers, you are liable to write off certain marketing strategies because you think they don't work when actually maybe they do. You're likely to miss other opportunities. You're likely to not pursue things because they seem like they'd be too expensive or not work. And you're likely to just generally have no idea what's happening and what's working and what's not working, which will make you feel more anxious and like you don't have any control in your business. If your big goal is to be getting more clients in your business, this is one of the most important skills you can build. Regardless of where they come from, whether you're getting clients from cold outreach, whether you're getting clients from Upwork, whether you're getting clients from your network, referrals, past business, more business, blah, 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 blah. Fiverr, Fiverr is one, although Fiverr might not be as relevant here, but it is still relevant. Regardless of where you're getting clients from, and especially if there's some action you take to try to create more clients, and that's why I wasn't sure if Fiverr was relevant, this is imperative. We have a different video where we talk about the three components of a freelance business. I'll link to it above and the bottlenecks within each. Um, basically, the TLDR is that there are three components in any business. There is leads, there is sales, and there is fulfillment, aka product, aka your services. So in this video and anything else about lead gen, uh, we're going to be focused on the leads part, which is getting people to sell stuff to. You have to have something to sell them, you have to be able to sell them, and you have to have people to sell things to. If you're missing any one of those three things, you do not have a business. Most freelancers are really good at the fulfillment part. You do your job, you do your services, that's it. They kind of suck at the sales part, they kind of suck at the lead gen part, and that's why most freelancers struggle. So just to be clear, whether you're doing networking, cold outreach, Upwork, Fiverr, LinkedIn, anything else, that's all lead gen, and that's what we're gonna focus on. And I'm gonna pull up this graphic that we have from the WRATES toolkit which is the um, basically the, the flow chart of the sales process for a freelancer or agency. So you can see basically we go from stranger to lead, to engaged lead, to sales call, to proposal, to client. These are all the stages. And knowing the what's called conversion rates uh, between each of these stages is really, really, really important. And knowing how long you spend in each stage is also really important. And so when I say knowing your numbers, it comes down to those two things. It's knowing how many people that I've found that I can contact respond to me. How many of these people who respond to me can I get on the phone? How many of these people I get on the phone can I send a proposal to? How many of the people I send a proposal to buy from me? Those are the things you need to know the transition points between in order to know how much you're actually spending in terms of dollars or time to get a client. And that's what we're going to dig into today. So to find out what that process looks like for you, I ask you this. This is an exercise, so I recommend you do it while we go. Ask yourself, how do I get clients right now? So if I said, yo, you need to go get a client ASAP, like by the end of the week and the next two weeks or whatever, what would you do? What would be the thing you would do? And waiting around with your fingers crossed, hoping for a referral does not count as a thing that you can do. Would you go on Upwork? Would you go on LinkedIn? Would you get in touch with past clients? Would you go on, uh, I don't know, wherever the hell else people go? Would you? What would you do? So that's the first question. And then I'm going to ask, what goes into that? What is your process there? So I'm going to use Upwork as today's example, because I think a lot of up, up, a lot of freelancers are Upworkers. So it'll be easy for us to all look at, and it has a pretty delineatable sales funnel. Uh, but if you do cold outreach, it's even easier and better. If you do something like tapping into your network, it's a little bit harder, but you still should do this exercise. So for Upwork, the process in my mind is pretty much, I go on there, I look at jobs. I'll just share my notion. There's going to be ugly notes, but I'll share it. I go on there, I look at jobs, I respond to some, I book calls with the ones who reply, I make a proposal, I get hired. That's like the Upwork funnel, pretty much. It's a little bit different because sometimes on Upwork, we all people reach out to you. But remember, this is doing something you can control. You can't really control who decides to randomly get in touch with you. So we're focused on like actions you take. And what you need to do is keep track of the conversion rates of each and know how much time each one takes you. Uh, because if you don't have that data. If you're missing even one of those two pieces of data, you won't really know what it's like costing you, whether it's costing you in terms of dollars or costing you in terms of time. And today I'm going to show you a couple examples of how having this data can be super empowering uh, for you growing your business and earning more per hour and earning more in general. So in the other video that I'll try to link to above, we talk about the big freelancer marketing mistake of expecting clients to be free. 
And I'm going to basically build on that example today to show you the financial consequences of skipping something because you feel like, oh, I don't need to pay for it. We'll do it with Upwork Connects. The too long didn't watch of that video is that right now you are paying for every single lead you've ever gotten, every single client you have ever gotten. You're just probably paying with your time. But paying with your time carries an opportunity cost. So if you multiply your hourly rate by the amount of time it takes you, that's kind of what you paid in terms of opportunity cost of what you could have earned if you'd spent that time on fulfillment work, aka doing your job for somebody. So what I'm going to do here is kind of peel back the onion on that Upwork Connects example, because I think it's a fun one. So imagine that you get all your clients in Upwork, and right now you do not pay for Upwork Connects. And the reason you don't pay for them is because you're cheap. <laughs> you don't want to pay for Upwork Connects. You want it to be free, so you just do it yourself. You might be missing out on a big opportunity to be essentially earning more by having it take you much less time to earn a client, and here's how. So let's say you track. And by the way, for a good example of this, uh, if you check out the Six Months to Six Figures podcast series I did with Brad, I had him straight up do this. Like I had him track his upworking. He made a really cool spreadsheet. He got some really, really good insights from it. Uh, so that'd be worth checking out. So let's say you tracked your numbers and they look something like this. Note, these are not real numbers. I don't know if any of these are realistic. I basically created these numbers to make easy math. They're vaguely along the lines of what the real world might be, but I do not think you should use them as benchmarks or assumptions or anything. They're only here to illustrate like the process of tracking and the process of like seeing the financial consequences. They're not here for setting your expectations about Upwork reply rates. So that's my disclaimer. Uh, so let's say though that you go on here and you have like a saved search to find all the jobs within your niche. And it, you spend three minutes skimming every single one and you respond to 50%. So your conversion rate of like curating a job is essentially 50%. Of the ones that you respond to, let's say you have a template and you spend 15 minutes each and you hear back from one in four, so 25%. That means that for every four replies you send, you have one conversation with somebody. And let's say each conversation you have takes about 10 minutes. Of the conversations you have, you book a call with half. So 50% conversion rate from conversation to sales call. Let's say that your sales calls are on average 30 minutes and about half of them seem like, like a good enough fit to send a proposal to. And then the proposal itself takes 45 minutes. I should have put that down here. Uh, proposal itself takes 45 minutes and about half the proposals you send get accepted. What we can do if you had this data is we can extrapolate it into something like this. We can see that one client means you have to send two proposals at 45 minutes each. In order to be able to send two proposals, you have to have four sales calls at a total of 30 minutes each. In order to have four sales calls, you need to have eight conversations at 10 minutes each. In order to have eight conversations, you need to send 32 initial messages at 15 minutes each. And in order to send 32 initial messages, you need to do 44, sorry, 64. There's a lot of numbers and lines. 64 job post skimmings at three minutes each. Now, if we calculate what we're actually paying, supposing that you are a $50 an hour freelancer, and you should change this for whatever your rates are, this means proposal creation essentially, quote, cost you $75. Because if it takes you an hour and a half and your rate is $50, then that means that you spent essentially $75 of opportunity cost to do this. Those sales cost calls cost you 100 bucks. Chat combos cost you $67. Upwork replies that you sent cost you $400. Job curation costs you $160. So the amount of opportunity cost, assuming all my math is right, is $802. This is your, your CAC, aka client acquisition cost. In this case, it's not quite the regular definition of CAC because the regular definition of CAC would be just in terms of dollars out. But as a freelancer who's DIYing, you're not yet paying somebody to do this, but you still have a CAC. If you think your CAC is zero, you are in big trouble because it's not. And that's why the video that we'll hopefully link to up here, up here, uh, it's so important to watch. I do not want you thinking that your clients are free because they're not. In this case, you're spending quite a lot of time to get a client. And if you wanted to replace yourself there, you would have to pay somebody else to do it. So that means it's not free. If you build your business model around the expectation that you get clients for free, you will not be able to scale safely because you, you won't be able to afford to. Everything is based on the idea that you can get someone to do like 20 hours or how many hours of uh, lead gen work this is for free, which obviously you can't. But imagine you were trying to scale and you had all of your margins based on the expectation that you would have to pay $800 cash to get a client. And even when you did that, and even when you paid for fulfillment, you could still be profitable. 
that is very exciting. That gives you a lot of work, a lot to work with because then you can optimize this existing setup. So even though it might initially sound depressing, what's cool is what it unlocks. And side note, if you've been through the free Charge What You're Worth course or taken our W Freelancing Rate course, you know that I'm a big fan of basically you positioning your services to your client about the, like in the sense of the impact that they can have on that client's business. And a lot of that comes down to doing what we're about to do here for you, for them, showing how your services optimize their funnel, in other words. Uh, but that's tangential. If you haven't taken charge of what you're worth yet, it's free. You can get it at dyf.link forward slash offer. But back to it, even though it sounds depressing, it unlocks some cool things. So a good example is the very top of your funnel here, as it's known, is this job curation step. You have to look at all these posts and say, is this something that I should even reply to? But imagine that the process of making that decision isn't actually that complicated. Like imagine you could distill it to a checklist. It's like, do they talk about blank? Do they talk about blank? Do they say this thing? Does their post involve this? Like imagine that it was just a complicated checklist. If you could have an AI do that or a VA do that or a VA who uses AI do that, then you suddenly save yourself a lot of money by delegating it. So imagine that you delegated that process to a VA. It takes them the same amount of time as you and you pay them 10 bucks an hour. So let me break the math down. So if you spend three minutes to curate one post and you need to curate 64 of them to get one client, what we do is we essentially divide uh, three minutes by 60 minutes, which is 0.05 hours. Three minutes, 0.05 hours. We multiply 0.05 by the amount we have to do, which is 64, and then we multiply that by the amount per hour. So if it's you, it's 50 an hour. If it's this $10 VA or $20 VA or whatever it is, you multiply it by what you have to pay this person. So for the $10 VA, uh, we multiply 64 times 0.05 times 10 equals $128 effective savings. Another hypothetical example that I mentioned earlier is the Upwork Connects one. So the big disclaimer again, this isn't real numbers. I don't know how much Upwork Connects costs off the top of my head. I don't know what kind of impact Upwork Connects have. What I do know is that they should probably have some kind of impact, positive or negative. And I also know you will have no idea what that impact is until you try it, track it, and test it. That's like what everything is going to boil down to. You have to calculate the risk. You have to try the thing. You have to actually track it so that you can make an assessment. All too often, people make an assessment without actually tracking it, and they're basically just making an emotional decision with no data, which is generally not a smart idea. So let's talk about this hypothetical example again with the disclaimer that I don't really know what I'm talking about in terms of conversion rate boost or cost. Let's pretend, hypothetically, that for these 24 initial replies you send, you could pay 20 bucks in Upwork Connects to get a boost on your reply rate to them. Because as I understand it, basically Connects allow you to get more featured in the results of replies from a client, which helps you get more replies. So let's say that you can pay 20 bucks and your Upwork reply rate goes from 25% to 33%. So this conversion metric is the one of like basically messages I sent that became conversations. That's the This is the part of the funnel that the connects would affect. Suppose the connects brought you from 25% to 33. That means instead of having to send 32 initial messages to get a client, you now only have to send 24. But what's really cool is that things like this ripple up to everything above them in the funnel. So not only do you only have to send 24 initial messages now, you also don't have to do all that curation. Instead of having to curate 64 job posts, you now only have to curate 48. So it reduces the cost of curation and the cost of the initial messages. What this looks like in terms of savings. So to get a client, you still have to send two proposals. You still have to have four total calls. You still have to have eight chat conversations. But by going from 32 initial replies to 24 at 15 minutes each, means that you go from 400 bucks to 300 bucks and save $100. And by going from 64 to 48 job skims at three minutes each, you go from 160 bucks to 120, which is $40 saved. So your like gross savings there is $140. And then the price for the connects was 20, which means you still come out $120 ahead. Again, I'm disclaiming, I don't know how Upwork Connects work. I don't know what the cost is. I don't know what the conversion boost is. So this is not me giving you advice to buy Upwork Connects. Do not take that away here. The advice is maybe try it. If you're going to try it, 
track it and see what the implication is. See how much time you actually save by doing this and then make your decision about whether or not it works. And if you're using platforms that are not Upwork, like cold outreach, paid ads, whatever, the tracking is just as important or more important, uh, but it's also a lot more intuitive. So you're probably already doing some form of tracking, I hope, if you're doing cold outreach. But if you're not, you should be. And you'll be tracking things like how many subject line sends of this subject line get how many replies? How much of this specific intro copy gets this many replies? And you'll use the different metrics in different parts of the funnel to know how well something's working. The big takeaway here is that as a freelancer, your time really is all you have. Time is a much more like close at hand resource for freelancers than typical businesses because we get paid for our time and we often pay in our time. And in order to get paid well and build a strong business, you have to know what your time costs are for those big three categories. So remember lead gen, sales, fulfillment. These are the three categories of business. You need to know how much time you pay for each for a typical client because that's what your actual project cost is. So track this stuff. I'm working on a nice Notion tracking database for our lead gen course, The Blueprint, that I'll release in the next version. Uh, but for now, I recommend just something simple-ish in Google Sheets. If you check out the Six Months to Six Figures series with Brad on the podcast and on YouTube, you can see how he set his up. And I think I have a little bit about it in the WRATES toolkit as well. Um, as you track this, something you'll find, or something I've experienced anyway, is that usually the biggest thing you can do to improve conversions at each step and also improve your client quality and how much you earn is improving your offer strength. So in other words, the value or perceived value of what it is you do for clients. We have a free course called Charge What You're Worth that teaches you how to do this and create a valuable offer. Uh, so I'd, check, I'd recommend you go check that out. It's at dyf.link forward slash offer. Thanks for being here and see you in the next video.